Hello and welcome to your Friday One Show with Alex Jones. And look who it is, it's only McFly's Harry Judd. Hi Harry, how are Hello, you? I'm good. How's 2021 so far? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. We're trying to be positive. We've, yeah. we've got this new lockdown and, you know, schedules. That's what it's all about for me with the kids, you know, set a schedule. Yeah, I mean, Lots you talked walks. about feeding the ducks. Feeding the ducks, that's what we did today. I ordered some duck food and it arrived this morning. So we took our duck food in the Tupperware. We fed the ducks. Good. And the seagulls, who are bird bullies. Yeah, because you were telling me bread's a bit off well, the menu. Well, this is what I heard. So, But what we do is we feed the ducks, then the seagulls come. Then you move on to a new spot to find more ducks. Then the seagulls come. So this keep... is lockdown chat. This isn't is it? serious <laughs> lockdown chat. And we've been litter picking, Al. Hey. We ordered some litter pickers um, and the kids are loving it. So we're trying to do some good positive. There we are. There's me and Kit with our litter pickers. Oh, that's a cute photo. Yeah, no, Lovely. it's fun. The, the kids love it, though. That's the thing. They love yeah, the. Yeah, I bet they do. And and Chris Packet is probably dead excited. We got a clap from a couple yesterday. Amazing. Oh, that's so. all you want, doesn't it? Yes. I like so many people. Harry, uh, you and McFly, you did that single last year. Well, you re released it. Yes. And we covered it all about you. Uh, a lovely video and all the proceeds went to the NHS. We've just seen it here and yes. it was so nice because you did it at home, of course, with your families. Highlighting how little I do in the band, just there with the tambourine. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was, I think, you know, we all felt pretty hopeless during that first lockdown and, uh, well, still do, to be honest. But it was just, we felt like we wanted to do something and obviously, like you said, all the proceeds are going to the NHS charity. So, obviously, it's still available as well now if you want to download the song and good, money's good going reminder. to a good place. Right then, we are starting the weekend in style this evening because later a music legend will... He will be joining us live from home in Miami to tell us all about it. So many great voices on that album and speaking of voices, DJ and presenter Fern Cotton will be here to tell us how she's almost lost her voice and how that health scare changed her life. And as always, do get in touch with any questions and comments for our guest tonight. Plus, we want to know how you guys are getting on back with the homeschooling oh. and how it's going after... What has been a bit of a bonkers week for parents everywhere. Absolutely. Now, we've already had this in from Zoe, who says, My son, Archie... Bo People feel the we same. We all feel the but same. But you know what? Well done. Because a week down. We've done it. We made it to the end of the week. Congratulations. And, of course, the other issue affecting parents is the news that there are no GCSE or A-level exams this year. And we saw this tweet from our friend and mother of twins, Gabby Logan, who sums it up beautifully. My two have just heard their GCSEs are cancelled. One has just gone to have a shower and a cry. The other sounds like they're having a rave in their bedroom. Hashtag twins. And the brilliant thing is, Gabby is here with us in the studio. <laughs> Welcome, Gabby. <laughs> and even better, the twins, <laughs> Ruben and Lewis, join us from home. <laughs> there they are. Hi. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Now, Ruben, uh, Lois, what we really want to know is who was crying and who was having the rave? Oh, take a guess. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, the speaker from Christmas did make an appearance. You know, I was, I was quite chuffed. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, I was, in fact, the one having a cry in the shower. So, um... Yeah. Which is what most people <laughs> on Twitter up. guessed. Yes, <laughs> right. And we, we talked well, about this earlier. I mean, you said you'd be the one having a party in your bedroom. I'd definitely be I'd having be a crying rave. in the yeah. shower. I'm with you, Ruben. How did you react, Gabby, to the news? <laughs> um, I was gutted for them because I know how hard they've been working and, you know, I know that it's a rite of passage, having gone through that myself and that experience. I don't really know yet. No. Oh, it's just, it is awful. Now, uh, Lois... What have you guys been chatting about since the news? You know, have you been speaking to friends? How are your friends taken the news? Yeah, I think we're all kind of... Yeah. Well, let's bring Fern back in, because, Fern, obviously we know that your children are primary school age, five and seven. It's been a heck of a week for parents uh, with the news that came on Monday. Now, have you learned any lessons from the first lockdown that made it easier, or has the novelty just worn off? Um, option B, I would say there, Alex. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what there is to learn. It's really hard, and I don't think there's any way around that. I don't think there are any loopholes. It's just really, really tough, especially when you have, you know, more than one kid because they're on different devices with a different timetable. I'm trying to work from home, like many people out there as well. It's um, it's definitely not easy. No, and on that note, we'd like to say thank you very much to the teachers who are working tirelessly to organise all of this at such short notice. None of us would be able to do it without their support, so thank you so much. And I feel yeah. sorry for them as well, because they're getting emails from parents like me saying, what's going on? 
oh, no, you know, what are they going to do? And I, I kind of resisted and waited a few days trying not to bombard them with that, yeah. knowing they were getting probably tens and tens of emails from parents saying, how are you going to find out, you know, what their grades are going to be? Yeah. Are they going to have mocks? And they actually sat a GCSE maths yesterday because um, they were going to do those early. So they did manage to get a GCSE experience yesterday. So It's all so worrying, isn't it, and yeah. confusing? Yeah. It is. Well, the BBC is going to help as much as possible, starting on Monday morning with three hours of primary school programmes on CBBC every weekday from 9am. And then for secondary students, there's two hours every weekday on BBC Two, featuring everything from Shakespeare to science. And all the content will also be available on the red button and, of course, on demand on the BBC iPlayer. There'll be full details of everything planned on BBC Breakfast on Monday morning. Brilliant. I just had a great idea, actually. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm just looking at Fern there and Reuben and Lois. Now they've got no GCSEs, they should be tutoring kids like Fern, shouldn't they, online? Oh, so all the GCSE you. kids should yes. be doing that teaching. That is a good idea. That's and Reuben <laughs> looks delighted with that <laughs> idea. I feel as if maybe Fern's kids should be tutoring me. <laughs> uh, brilliant, <laughs> thank you that. so much. Pleasure. <laughs> thanks, Gabby, and thanks, Reuben and Lois as well. Uh, we'll be chatting to Fern in a bit about her new book. And Barry Gibb is getting warmed up to join us. It's the week when all, of course, the Christmas decorations have been coming down and trees have been dragged out the front door, creating a needle nightmare. Most trees are headed straight to the wood chipper, but for some families, a tree is for life, not just for Christmas. Oh, I'm in. In, I'm sold. convinced. I'm sold. Let's do it. I've never been sadder to say goodbye to our tree. Do you have a name for your tree? Dolly. Dolly. <laughs> Only because Dolly Parton was on that week and the Dolly Parton Christmas album was it on works. the mantelpiece. Oh, so then I'm I, not well... judging. I haven't got one. I was thinking Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> no. no, OK. Right, let's move no. on. Now, it's time to say hello to the absolute legend that is Barry Gibb. Ah, oh, evening, Barry. <laughs> Hi, folks. Hi, Barry. Now, listen, it's a great time to be a Barry Gibb fan. There's the documentary about the Bee Gees on Sky that is absolutely fantastic. And your new album, Greenfields, is out today, which is a country album. So tell us, where did your love of country come from? Um, I think growing up in Australia, maybe, um, that's, there was, there was, country music was really rock and roll in those days. They, there was no real country market, but I was hearing Conway Twitty and... It's only make believe and uh, Johnny Cash, Teenage Queen, all of those types of songs uh, really sunk in with me. And I've always been, I've always been uh, Marty Robbins. I've always been into real songs, real songs and real lyrics. And all of and the, so and, I, yeah. and yeah. all of the tracks, sorry Barry, on the album are your classic tracks. How easy was it to change them and give them a kind of country? style or a country makeover it was it was organic and it was um it wasn't like you didn't we, we didn't plan anything we just got together and i asked people if they would do it i also um uh, got to got to approach dave cobb my son stephen um went went to nashville and and spoke to a lot of people about it and uh, people came on board you know they were just really nice and they came and they got involved and i think that's that's an enormous compliment and very humbling. So it was a great experience. It was it was more than a record, more than a record. Yeah, and as you say, Barry, lots of people joined in. There were some huge names. You had Cheryl Crow, Olivia Newton-John, and of course Dolly Parton. Now there was one song that Dolly really wanted to sing with you, wasn't there? Well, um, you know, they all had a choice. They all had their own choices. So it, I didn't try to manipulate anyone's uh, anyone singing any certain song. But Alison Krauss wanted to do Too Much Heaven, and Dolly really wanted to do words, and that's just how it came down. Um, I never really did choose any song for anyone. Now, you know? we, we I assume... Have, I would have chosen to love somebody personally. Oh, yeah, you yeah, like that's, that. That's my one, I love it. But we assumed, Barry, that, you know, you and Dolly ran into each other every day, basically. <laughs> um, but we were shocked to hear that you'd never actually sung together before this. And in fact, you hadn't seen her in about 40 years when she recorded Islands in the Stream, which some people maybe won't know is your song that you wrote. Well, that's possible. That's possible. Um, but uh, it was such a pleasure. And she just walked in and sang. And uh, there was no effort. It was basically about three takes for Islands in the String. And I never got to sing with her until this point. So it was my pleasure. 
It was my pleasure. Now, of course, uh, yeah. Elvis famously did a version of Words when he was in Vegas, and we heard that you went to Graceland on a mission to meet the man himself, but it didn't quite get a plan? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was allowed to go up the driveway, um, the yellow brick road, if you like, and I got to the front door, and there was a limousine there, and they, his uncle told me I could go up there and knock on the door, and I might get to meet him. I didn't. He didn't come to the door, for whatever reason, but uh, I got as far as the front door. So and close, but no cigar. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's OK. I looked inside the limo and I saw the first television in a car I'd ever seen. And that was, that was, that was all a thrill anyway. Amazing. Now, Barry, like many yeah. Bee Gees fans, uh, I've watched the new documentary. Now, I've heard that it's something you aren't going to be watching. And I, I wanted to say, personally, from my point of view, for what it's worth, I think it's, it was an absolutely stunning documentary. And it, it, did justice to the amazing career that, that you guys had. So um, I just wanted to say that. And, and, and why is it that you um, didn't feel like you wanted to watch the documentary? I think since it's obvious, you know, uh, uh, I lost, I, the only member of my family, my immediate family is my sister, Leslie, who lives in Australia. And she has eight children, mm. you know, um, but that's, that's, my, me, that's my original family now. That's what, that's what I have. So watching them all pass, and that's that's not something I want to see. No, absolutely not. Well, you know, we looked back through through the archives and, and looked at some lovely photos, and obviously there's 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 loads of them. Um, we found a, a real a real lovely photo back from we think it's Australia in 1963. Yeah. Um, before you really found fame, what what memories then does that photo evoke? Do you remember that day, Barry? Yes, of course I do. Of course I do. Um, we were. We used to do um, hotels and our return soldiers clubs. This, that was bandstand, that was Australian bandstand. Um, and I think that we were just, we were billed as a comedy trio, which is strange in itself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, as you can imagine, we've been inundated with questions from our viewers, so we'll just do a couple now. Um, Rebecca would like to ask, um, for, on behalf of a son, William, who's 11, Hey, you're watching as well. We hope that's answered your question. Yeah, you certainly have a, a huge list of amazing songs. So thank you, Barry. We'll, um, we'll be talking to you soon. And of course, the album Greenfields, the Gibb Brothers songbook, volume one, is out now. Now, they say every photo tells a story and photographer Simon Bray has found a powerful way to bring those stories to life. Yes, he spends his time recreating treasured memories for those who've lost a loved one. For this one, you might need some tissues. My dad, James. Yes, I was telling Gabby during that you've got to watch it till the end, and it's it's heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, that really blindsided really, me. That yeah. yeah. Um, our next guest, Fern Cotton, was watching that, and and Fern, we know in your podcast, Happy Place, you do talk about grief. What did you make of Simon's project then? just beautiful you know like Gabby I I didn't know the outcome of that story and it's so moving and it's beautiful that you know there's that personal impetus for for him to to do this project it's gorgeous mm. it is uh now Fern between the podcast and your books that uh, you've been doing you've covered a lot about the anxiety that many people have been feeling this last year so how have you and your family coped you know, I think like everybody else, it's big ups and downs, isn't it? We're trying to just take it day by day. But, you know, I think the feeling is overwhelm a lot of the time because we're juggling so much, whether you've got kids or not. You know, there might be job uncertainty or just the anxiety of not having any structure to your day or or just not even knowing what the future holds because things keep getting chucked our way. So, you know, if you've got anxiety or depression or anything from the past this is the year where it's probably going to get triggered and we really need to look out for each other absolutely and you mentioned working from home and actually your job has evolved a lot over the last five years and you've become a prolific author and your latest one speak your truth you wrote during the first bit of lockdown really didn't you so tell us yeah. a bit about what the book's all about then 
So the book is, it, well, the catalyst was I had, I found a cyst, well, I didn't find it, a, a doctor found a cyst on my vocal cords and that got me really curious and thinking, well, why there? You know, why on that part of my physical body is, is the cyst there? So I kind of started looking into that area of my body and how I use my voice and, and the sort of the channel that you have there. And I thought, God, I, you know, I'm, I'm probably not using it very well. And that's why there's tension there. And that's why maybe this little critter is there. So that really got me thinking. And the book is really about, you know, all those times that we've swallowed down words we've wanted to say, all those times that we've said yes, when really we went, we meant no, all those times that we've agreed with people or nodded, but, you know, been desperate to have our own opinion or say something, but have feared rejection, judgment, you know, being ostracized. Um, I think it's a problem for most people out there. I certainly struggle with it daily. So, yeah, so it was it was a really interesting exploration into that subject matter and something I'm still desperately trying to learn now. Yeah, yeah it's very true. And we spoke actually as well about social media and obviously you've used your social media for, like in a really positive way and, and definitely helped lots of people out there. But we spoke before about how it can also be a really negative space and someone like yourself who is speaking their truth can get shot down and have really negative comments thrown at you too. Mm. And I know that's something you've struggled with, I have as well. And um, But I guess speaking your truth is trying to ignore that negativity and, and you know, get your message out there in, in a positive way. Yeah, I think, you know, it isn't easy to do and not everybody's going to always agree with you. But, you know, that's a weird thing that's been sort of opinion has been warped over the years. And in the modern world, you know, we're not allowed to have different opinions so much anymore because people are so quick to judge or want to slam us or whatever. And this goes for people not in the public eye, it's for everybody. This is just you having an opinion and wanting to say your bit in a group of friends or whatever. And I think we need to kind of reclaim that a bit, that we're all allowed to think differently and also say our bit. If it's coming from a good place, if it's coming from a place of of love and, and of, you know, meaning well and good intention, then I think we should be able to kind of calmly speak about what we want to. Um, but we do have to bear in mind there will be repercussions and they might not always align with what we're, we're thinking, but that's okay, that's yeah. all right. I mean, as you said, it doesn't have to be big revelations. You know, the example you give towards the beginning of the book is kind of turning down an invite to a 40th birthday party and I'm so bad. I'll say yes, 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 yes and think I really can't go at the last minute and then make something awful up. Yeah. You know, I'm guilty of it big time. So we, I think yeah. we've all, are you good at it? I, I imagine, Gabby, that you are better than me at this sort of thing because you're more down the line, I think, aren't um, you? Is that, is that an insult? No, I think that's <laughs> a massive compliment. <laughs> I'm just terrible. I think with age actually comes the confidence to do that because I definitely wasn't as confident of doing that, say, in my 30s. But I think into yeah. my 40s, I've probably found a bit more of that voice where you think, well, this is not actually what I want to do. This is not where I want to go. And this is, you know, not what I want to say. So I definitely feel a bit more, uh, yeah. it's a kind of, a real confidence as opposed to a cloak that you wear sometimes, yes. you know? Yeah, because you make true. yourself annoyed, don't you, if you don't tell the truth. We're just going to do some comments from viewers, and we've had a lot in on homeschooling. So Fiona says, like Gabby, I have twins. My son could have cried and my daughter celebrated <laughs> with the news of GCSEs being cancelled. As a teacher in a sixth form college, I'm also devastated for my A-level students and B-tech students who only found out their exams, which are due to take place this week, were cancelled on Tuesday. Oh, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. I'm so disappointed for all the teachers too. Um, I, like they, are emotionally spent. Fiona, thank you. And Liz Hatton has emailed in. She is thrilled to have you on, Barry. She's hoping her copy of Greenfields will be delivered today but wants to know when restrictions are lifted will you be coming back to the UK for a tour UK because a tour we miss you miss you oh listen I I, I I would love to I would love to so if the if the opportunity arises um, I would love to perform for the people who love the group and for people who have followed our music and like the songs and I'm always going to be there to do that if I'm asked you know brilliant and if you're back in the UK Barry pop in next time and see <laughs> us in the flesh Yes, and Liz good. also thanks you uh, for lifting her spirits during this oh. terrible, terrible time. So thank you, Barry. Brilliant. Thank, thank you, you also to Fern. Thanks, lovely to see you. As always, Speak Your Truth is out now. And of course, thank you to Gabby as thanks well. Thanks for having me. Lovely company. Well, everybody, we made it to Friday. Have the best weekend possible and we will see you in the same place, same time.